Hello and welcome to Boomer and Beyond Wellness. I'm Angela Fischetti. So today's workout is a unilateral total body workout and we will be including supersets. Now the accessories we'll be using today will be a sticky yoga mat, a workout bench, but this is not a requirement. So for one exercise called the chest press, we'll be doing this on our backs, face up, Another way to say this is supine. And for this particular exercise, you can also go to the floor or use your bed. I'll be using a variety of dumbbells of free weights between eight to 20 pounds and leveling up a bit by wearing two, um, by wearing wrist weights that I have preset at two pounds each. I'll also be using a fit ball in this workout. If you don't have a fit ball, you can use a nine inch Pilates ball. Now this takes me into the medical disclaimers and precautionary measures. So um, for those of you with latex allergy, be careful. The mat and the fit ball or the Pilates ball, they're made out of latex. So you do want to look for non-latex or latex free. Now if you have any knee issues, especially if bending the knees in, in a, a range of motion of bending the knee, which is also known as flexion of the knee, is a challenge for you, then let's take it to the wall because we're gonna do some squats, we're gonna do some deadlifts, some lunges, etc. And if, you can always use this as an alternative for you. Now, we wanna make sure the ankles are slightly forward of the knees and you only bend to the degree that's tolerable for you. And because you're upright, this is a great reason why those of you with the back spine issues um, who have been told not to forward flex the spine and also those of you with um, osteoporosis of the spine and the hyperkyphosis, which is that hunched appearance, that's a great alternative for all of you for that type of work. Now, if you have um, carpal tunnel syndrome, please be advised wrist extension. You want to avoid it. Doesn't matter where the arm is. It has to do with the position of the wrist. Also, if you have osteoporosis of the hip or hip replacement. Now, I'll be doing a lateral lunge. So I'm stepping out pretty wide. But however, you may have been told not to bring your legs wide apart, so therefore you take a shorter range of motion. If you have any rotator cuff muscle type issue deep to your shoulders, be forthcoming. I have one right now. It's affecting my supraspinatus. Also, um, pinched nerve. And I'm going to re-invite those of you medicated or not for hypertension uh, into this category because you may have been advised not to bring your arms up and overhead. We will be doing a shoulder press here, this military press. Now I can do it without the resistance. However, I can't. So let me show you what I will be doing. And you folks that fall into those categories can try this as well. I'm gonna plug the arms into their sockets. Now I'm demonstrating bilaterally for time's sake. So we're lifting up and depressing down, lifting and lowering. So you can do that, a shoulder shrug instead. Also, if you have a um, golfer's elbow, which is medial epicondylitis or tennis elbow, lateral epicondylitis, well, folks, I'm going to suggest that you seek further advice regarding bicep and tricep work. Make sure it's appropriate for you. Now, um, the reason why I mention all of these issues is because they are chronic concerns. And I'm going to su suggest that if you have any chronic issue whatsoever, regardless if I've mentioned it here or not, then I would invite you to preview the video first before participating in it and look for what you can do. Um, but if you're not sure, then I would also invite a medical healthcare practitioner who knows your body best to preview the video as well to help you make an informed decision. So now for some reminders. You want to feel free to stop and rest whenever you need to. However, you're not invited to quit. You can take a breather, 
and then come back in. Even if it's just for one more repetition, this is how you will get stronger. Also, to please make sure that you keep yourselves hydrated with water during the workout. However, some more precautionary measures, if you have bladder or kidney issues and you've been advised not to drink a lot of water, you follow that advice. Um, also on the channel, we have a rating of perceived exertion chart, RPE for, sh for short, and um, you go to the community tab on the channel and you'll find it there. I, I have it so that you can download it and print it out if you'd like. It is advised for those who, for the demographic of this channel, to um, work out at an RPE between three and six. And also on the channel, I have a video that is uh, a warm up and a cool down video, and you can interchange these because it is advised for those of us 55, five, five years and above to warm up for 10 minutes prior to any workout. So this is how we're going to work here today. So um, I'm going to present to you 10 exercises and we're going to be do the, doing them vertically. And um, we're going to do them without any of the equipment. This is to help those of you who are um, new to exercise, new to strength training, but especially for those of you who have the chronic concerns. And of course, you're also invited to continue the work with us, even though we'll be adding the equipment Feel free not to if that's the level that you're at. It's perfectly all right. And then after we do it vertically, that's when we move into the super setting. Five blocks of two exercises each. I may throw in some stretches in between uh, the blocks of exercises, but I do want to say right now that at the end of the workout, please go to that warm up cool down video and take some time to really properly cool down for yourselves. So beginning here with always how to stand in the workout. So it's an athletic ready stand. So I'm looking down, checking that my toes are in the same line as each other. I'm gonna place my hands on the high pelvic bone with the fingers pointing straight down, not in toward each other. I'm lining up my ankles to knees to the inside of that high iliac crest. And then I'm gonna to turn to the side. Oftentimes you will see that people come into this tipping of the pelvis forward. It's an anterior pelvic tilt. Well, what we wanna do is just kind of like a subtle posterior pelvic tilt. It's also known as a pelvic tuck, but you don't wanna keep going to the point where you come into a standing abdominal crunch. So that's your athletic ready stance. So now we're gonna begin the workout. The first two exercises are a static lunge combined with a bent over back row. So I'm gonna stand here and shimmy my leg back. I'm up on the ball of the foot and the back heel is way high off the floor. You can bring your arms alongside of you like a suitcase style or hands to the waist, whatever works best for you. And then we're gonna go down and up. And the primary work is in that front leg. We inhale as we lower, we exhale on the effort, and the exhale is the way up. You wanna breathe in and out through the nose, and you wanna pause at the peak of the contraction. It's like this little stop, this little delay. So I'm gonna go for one more, and other side. Shimmy back. So I take a nice big stance, chest up. Now this side, well, my range of motion might be different because you're, you're viewing this as my left leg and I, it's my real right. And you know, I'm dealing with an injury there since a child. So it's just, I might have a different range of motion on this side. Well, that's the beauty of unilateral work, isn't it? Exhale as I lift, inhale as I lower. I'm gonna go for one more and step forward. Now, bent over is a giveaway here, folks, for those of you with the flexion of the spine issues. That's not for you. So bilaterally, I'm going to demonstrate a back row where we're standing for you, all right? So we can all do this as a warm up together. I'm gonna to pull 
and come out in front, exhale, pull. I'm gonna turn my back to you. And the emphasis here is on scapular retraction, drawing those shoulder blades together. Be careful, we don't wanna start doing this forward head projection. Two more, exhale, pull. One more, pull, hold, and release. Regarding the forward head projection, folks, those of you medicated or not for um, hypertension, you have vertigo or GERD, I want you to avoid this movement, which is flexion of the cervical spine at the neck. Now, our next um, block would be lateral lunges along with narrow grip chest press. So here we go. I'm gonna step out wide, except those of you who know your modification, right? Now you can do it so that you're stepping in and you're not touching the floor. You're landing here in the abduction, which is going away from the midline, and we're returning through adduction, returning to the midline. One more repetition, hold. Take it to the other side. I want to make sure you see the sneakers. Exhaling, inhaling. I'm going to go for one more. Okay, so now the chest press, well, that's going to be on our backs. So I'm going to stay upright for those of you who need to, all right? So it's the opposite of the back row. So the emphasis here, athletic ready, we're gonna push, push. So working front deltoid, tricep, along with pectoral muscles. And you can even take it on an incline if you want by leaning back, it's totally up to you. One more and lower the arms down. The next block would be a kickstand deadlift along with the military press or if you choose the shoulder shrug. So I'm going to demonstrate here now the difference between a basic squat and a deadlift. So with a basic squat, athletic ready stance, toes are lifted inside the shoes, belly button is in, you sit back into a chair, you come up by pushing into your heels, take that slight posterior pelvic tilt, squeeze the glutes and the quadricep muscles. And one more time. Now here's the difference between a squat and a deadlift. The deadlift is a hip hinge. Pelvic tilt, squeezing up the glute, so it has similarity. I have lifted the toes inside the shoes. Now I'm gonna show you a kickstand deadlift and this is what makes it unilateral. So I'm gonna come up onto the ball of the back foot. Notice it's not as far back as I had it on the static lunge. Hands in front of the thigh and both knees bend up and forward. So I think up and forward and I'm really pushing through that front heel. Again, the front leg is working. The back one is more like that. Well, it's like a kickstand, right? And you can play. Some go like this, you can lift. So it's up to you. I'm gonna go for one more. Step forward and then the other side. Make sure you can see. Okay, chest is lifted. I'm not sure I can go as low. We have to see how this side handles it. Up and forward. Now, keep that head lifted, especially medicated or not. Hypertension, you have GERD or vertigo. Head is up. I'm gonna go for one more giving myself a couple of extra repetitions on this side because it's a little bit weaker. All right, and we're doing this with the military press or the shoulder shrug. So for this part of the demonstration, I'm gonna sit down to show you the military press, but I will be doing shoulder shrug with weight. We come up and down. So it's a narrow grip. 
the palms are facing each other. I wouldn't be able to demonstrate this if it were a wide grip, folks, with the palms facing forward. Doesn't mean you can't work out. You figure out how to work around the injury, not to aggravate it, of course not. I'm gonna avoid that. I'm gonna go for two more. And relax it. Let's take a couple of shoulder rolls for the moment. And next is going to be a bent over fit ball hip extension. I'm not gonna use the ball here for the demonstration. Um, and we're gonna combine this with concentration curls. So I'm gonna use my bench like so. That means this is contraindicated for carpal tunnel. What you folks wanna do in the one of two things, you can either work this with a soft fist so that your wrist is straight or soften up the, at the knees and lower the elbows to the bench. Therefore, there's no pressure on the wrist at all. Now from here, I bend the knee and up and down. So you want, it's like the foot is dorsiflexed, so it's flexed, all right? And the sole of the foot, it's as if you wanna stamp the imprint of your sneaker on your ceiling. Draw that belly button up and in. I'm gonna go for one more. So this is great for the glutes, the hamstrings, and also your back extensor muscles. Making sure both arms are straight. And my eye gaze is out in front of me. It's not straight down like this. It's out in front of me. I'm gonna go for two more. One more. Set the foot down and roll it on up. Now those concentration curls, biceps, forearms. Sitting. You wanna brace your elbow into your inner thigh, not your inner knee. The kneecap, the patella, not really officially uh, attached to anything. It kind of floats around in the socket. You don't wanna malalign that. So we're pushing into the inner thigh and we curl. The pause at the peak is at, up top. What we want to avoid, particularly with heavier weight, is this. You'll see people rocking and boy, oh boy, you can do some damage to the shoulder that way. All of these exercises will help benefit your activities of daily living. I'm gonna go for one more. And now the other side. Be careful here with the bicep, tricep work, right? For who? Those with uh, golfers or tennis elbow. Really wanting to make sure the shoulder is stabilized. pausing at the peak. And you can also use the opposite thigh for leverage. I'm gonna go for one more, one more now. Pause and release. So the final block will be curtsy squats with a bent over tricep kickback. Remember, wall support for those who need it. So this, I'm going to bring the fit ball into it because it's just a nice tool to help get the placement. This will be in lieu of my weight. For some of you, you can use your fit ball. So here we go. I'm gonna step off to the side a bit. I'm up on the ball of the back foot. The back heel is lifted. Hips are straight forward. And you're gonna squat down. Primary work, front leg. Look out in front. Exhale as you come up. I'm gonna go for one more. Pause. And other side. Hips forward, up in the ball of the back foot. And Belly button in. 
One more. All right, and then the final exercise will be the bent over tricep kickback. I will demonstrate this upright and bilaterally. Hands basically in the same line as your waist. And we're going to extend the arms out behind us. Be careful, a lot of people do this thinking they're bringing in their arms further back. That's not happening when you do that, so be careful with that. Now this can happen a lot, where you bring the arms back and then I see people do this and swing back in. No, the elbows, the fulcrum, hold there, couple more. Working posterior deltoid, upper back muscles, and along with the triceps. Last one, pause. Release down, let's take a couple of shoulder rolls, and then we're gonna go back to the top, incorporate our supersets. So now we're doing static lunges with a bent over back row. So I'm grabbing my weights. I'm just gonna grab one for this and set myself up here for the static lunge. You know what, two weights. Sorry about that. I got it confused for the moment with the lateral. So we're going with the static lunge, standing tall, step back, shimmy the foot rather than hopping it back there, and down and up. So I'm working with 20 pounders, One more, and step forward, taking it over to the other side. Shimmy, shimmy. Chest up, shoulders back and down. Try not to let the weight swing out in front of you. Two more. And close. Now we come to the bent over back row. You know your modification. Watch your hand here for carpal tunnel. You can also cup your fingers. So it's like you're starting an old fashioned lawnmower. Belly button is pulled up and in. Try not to drop the head down. One more. And down. Other side. Two more, push. You don't want to turn the torso out. Last one. Okay, back to the static lunge. Shimmy, shimmy. Chest up, here we go. Control the position of your arms. One more. Eight to 15 repetitions. Man, oh man, I moved a little bit more north in Florida and it's hotter. Getting away from Miami Beach is definitely hotter. One more, step forward. Okay, back to the bent over back row. You see how you do it now, with super setting. Back to back without rest. Last 
last one. Other side. Pause at the peak. That's on the lift. Two more. And down. So now I'm going to set the weights down for the moment because I want to adjust my bench because the next round will be uh, lateral lunges with the narrow grip chest press. I'm going to take the equipment that I need, put it up here. So I'm using a 20 pounder for the lateral lunge. Actually, this way. Okay. So I'm choosing to tap, but not to set the foot down. And that will bring that heart rate up. Two more. Other side. Yeah, you hear me breathing, right? Yeah. Now, some of you might want to do this. You come in and pause with a full stop on the floor. One more. Okay. Now, I'm gonna put on my wrist weights. You know, and I like them a lot because particularly for this channel to level up, um, I much prefer the ability to level up with smaller weight increments. I can't handle sometimes three, five, 10 pound increments. So these are quarter pound weights that are put in here. Again, preset at two pounds each. So now for the narrow grip chest press, one arm unilaterally. So for those of you with back issues, you can put one foot up or both feet. So right now this is 17 pounds. You wanna puff up the chest toward the ceiling, find a point upon which to gaze on that ceiling and hit it with the weight, but do not thrust it up there. Place it. One more. Now I'm going to pass it over to the other arm. On this side, because of the pre existing injury, I'm going to probably take a shorter range of motion. If you want to, leg is up. Working front deltoid, tricep pectoral, no collapsing of the chest. Low back is actually slightly arched here. And that would be it. <laughs> and slowly lower it down. Now I'm going to keep the weights on for the lateral lunge. So we're going to make that 24 pounds here. And therefore, I will be closing. So just that additional four pounds makes me go, yeah, I don't want to pop in and out. One more. Other side. Oh, okay. 
Can you see the sneakers fully? Here we go. Yeah, okay, very good. And over, up, and close. Notice head is up, chest is lifted. Let's go for two more. And close. Back to the narrow grip, chest press. Puff up the chest. That little puff up of the chest will help build in that slight arch of the low back. You don't want to bring the weight all the way down below the bench, folks. That's a lot of, a lot of pressure on a rotator cuff. Hmm. I want to try two more on this side. One more. Pass it over. Let's see what we can handle on this side, right? I think I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra support here. Yeah, it makes a difference for me. Two more. I know it's a shorter range of motion, but that's what I can handle right now. That's it. Lovely. Set this down. And let me swing the bench back, part of my back. And I'm going to remove those wrist weights, I think. Let me just double check. What we're doing next would be, yes, I'm gonna remove them. Next would be the kickstand deadlift along with either the military press or the shoulder shrug. Okay, so I'm gonna try both weights for the kickstand deadlift. I was practicing with one weight. What the heck, right? So, here we go. Up high on the ball of that back foot. Up and forward. Bending both knees, hinging at the hip. I can even show it to you next time with next set, with the one weight too. I think I'll do that. One more. Man, does this get into that glute, folks. Woo, mama. Okay. <laughs> okay, ball of the back foot. Let's see what happens here. Real cautiously, here we go. Let me make sure I get that chest up. There it is. And both knees. I'm gonna go for two more. Mm. Okay, and we're doing this. What did I say? Yes, you have that choice of the military press or the shoulder shrugs. I'm going to hold both weights, though working unilaterally for the shoulder shrug, I'm standing a little bit wider and starting on my real right, which you see as the left. Two more. My glasses are falling off from the sweat. 
such an excellent, excellent exercise for the health of the neck, for the upper trapezius muscles, for stability and mobility within the shoulders and neck area. Last one. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you, if you choose to just use one weight, how you can do that for the kickstand deadlift. So I'm using the 120 pounder, I want you to see the feet, okay? I'm like so, and you keep the weight out in front, very, very close to the lower leg and the thigh. Primary work, front leg. Keep your eye gaze up, folks. Keep your chin lifted. Wow. One more. Oh, man, this one gets me every time. Okay, I hear from some of you on this exercise about how you kind of feel it for days. I know. Mm. Just gotta make sure my chest comes all the way up because maybe I won't be able to go as low on this side. So I have to allow for that. Mm. Mm. One more. Wow. Okay, back to shoulder shrugs unilaterally. Okay. Oh man, one more it just creeps up on you. <laughs> Here we go. What I love about shoulder shrugs is that it really helps when I'm doing a lot of work at my desk. It brings a lot of blood flow to the area. Mm. Let's go for two more. Oh man, and down. So I'm gonna set these down and then I'm gonna grab my fit ball and one 10 pound weight. So we're going to be doing the bent over fit ball hip extension along with the concentration curls. If you want to wrap ankle weights around your ankle, go for it. So when I make sure the plug does not touch your skin, wedge it in behind your knee. Just want to make sure, yeah, I don't want this standing leg too far back. So here we go. Stamp the sole of the foot on the ceiling. Remember carpal tunnel, your alternatives. Also, those of you bent over, right? You wanna avoid that. Go to the wall for a wall seat. Keep squeezing the ball. Don't let it escape you. Sometimes it does, no big deal. One more. Okay. I'm gonna take a little extra stretch on this one for the moment. Okay. Now, let's place the ball behind the opposite. I'll double check here my position. Push the bench away and up and down. Up and down. Lift the head, look out in front. Two more, please. And I'm gonna set this down for the moment. Grab the 10 pounder, because I find if I go a little heavier on this one, that shoulder will wanna rock back and forth. Brace the elbow to the inner thigh. You can use this arm here. Go down a little bit lower, that's it. Control it, pause. Concentration bicep curl. Share some similarities with, I would say, preacher curl or spider curl. Pause, slow as you lower, control the movement. 
last one of this set. And then we take it to the other side, brace it, opposite hand for leverage. You can look at the shoulder to make sure it's not wandering around. I'm gonna go for one more and down. Let's go back to the fit ball and take those the fit ball bent over, get extension, plug does not face the skin. Push that bench away from you. Don't like collapse down into it. One more. Careful. And the other side. Make sure the standing leg is proper, properly positioned. Pause, exhale, pause, inhale, exhale, pause. I'm gonna go for two more, look out in front. And then carefully lower. And now, back to concentration curls. And after this, we have just the last block. The beauty of supersetting is that it takes up less time. You can get in more work. One more. And other side. Brace the elbow to the inner thigh, not the inner knee. Are you drinking your water? If you need to stop and rest, that's fine. Rejoin us, please. And I do include a timestamp for every workout, folks so that you know where you can fast forward to for the replay. And relax that. And the last round will be curtsy squats with the bent over tricep kick back. So I'm grabbing an eight and 120. So this one we're holding up to the chest. You can use your fit ball instead if you need to. Step it out and down and up. I need the hips forward. I just needed to adjust for a second. Working that front leg. Wow. Oh, two more. Man, I feel this. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> Other side, I just want to make sure I can see myself on camera. This is where I get a little wonky. Hips forward. It's really great to watch yourself in a video so you can correct your own alignment. Two more. set that down and do the bent over tricep kickback upright for those of you who need to be pause
One more. Oh. Carefully place it down with the arm. I love having my own home equipment, folks. Two more. Oh, man. Okay. Back to curtsy squat. Holding the collars of the weight, right? Up here. Hips forward and up and down. Inhale as I lower, exhale as I lift. One more. Oh yeah. <laughs> and other side, ball of the back foot forward, weight close to the body. Two more. Oh, wow. Ooh, la, la. Yes. Bent over tricep kickback. Two more. Oh. Other arm. Elbow up. Pause at the peak. Two more. Take a couple of shoulder rolls, folks. All right, I'm just take a couple of stretches here with you. So you could do this standing or seated, but I'm gonna bring my leg out in front, pulling the butt flush back, and bending forward, coming into a hamstring stretch. Chest is up. I feel a nice stretch on that low back as well. Breath in and out through the nose. Notice I'm not rounding down. I like to think I'm lifting up to go forward. Yeah, we know we're going down with it, you know. But try not to get caught up in that downward part of it. And then up and forward. Other side. Pull the butt flush back. And chin is up. Foot is dorsiflex. To plantar flex means pointing down dorsiflex, sole of the foot toward the face is how I like to describe it. Wow, I feel this. And slowly up, let's take a couple of upper body stretches, interlock the fingers, like, I like to think of this sort of like a basketball hoop overhead. Athletic ready stance, yes, my toes are even and slowly down. How about a nice bicep stretch? Now the hands here, the wrists are dorsiflex, uh, or, um, pardon me, uh, this is wrist extension. So we need to avoid that for carpal tunnel. You folks can straighten the arms out and reach out through the middle fingers and you'll really elongate the entire length of the arms. And then I'm gonna go thumbs down, inhale, exhale. Going to interlock all 10 fingers. So clasp the thumbs as well. Notice I'm not here, and I'm definitely not here. If you can't get those wrists together, then you can hold um, a strap and bring your arms back like this, and you will still get a nice stretch at that front deltoid, at that pectoralis muscle. And let's take a couple of 
nice big shoulder rolls. So that's what we have for you today, folks, here on Boomer and Beyond Wellness. And please, folks, if you find some value to my content, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. It's free to do so. Also, feel free to share it with those who might be a little timid about working out. And also, if you, if the spirit moves, uh, how about a nice little kind comment? And um, also, don't forget to hit that notification bell to be reminded of new content. So until next time, eat your greens, eat your beans, drink your water, and be well. Thanks so much.